The President of the Republic tomorrow will fulfill constitutional requirement that uh, impressed upon him to tell the nation what our state uh, is. He will be touching on a lot of issues from uh, security to economy, education, and what have you. Well, this morning we'll have a conversation about security because uh, some major incidents have happened in the past year, uh, over the last three years as well. The un unsaid murders, unsolved murders, the missing Takradi girls who are now being told have been killed, uh, seizure of toll boots and public toilets and uh, attacks on regional security coordinator, attack on the court premises, Ayawas OS will go by election, Galamsi murders, killing of a sitting MP JB uh, and, and so many others. So, so we will have the conversation with uh, Mr. Adam Bona, he is a security and safety expert. Also on Skype, will be joined by uh, Adib Sani of JATK. He is also a security analyst. Let's start with Mr. Bona here. Good morning, sir. Thank you very much for your Good time. Morning. How are you doing? Johnny, yeah. What, what would be your assessment of the state of our security as we speak today? Well, yes, morning and morning to uh, viewers. I, I, I would begin by saying uh, we didn't start quite well. 2017, mm -hmm. when the president got, you know, when he was sworn in on the 7th of uh, January, right. 2017, we had, you know, spontaneous, you know, uh, takeover of toilets, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the Tema Harbor, we had the tow boot mm -hmm. taken over, we had, you know, uh, things, places such as the, call them lorry parks, mm -hmm. you know, uh, sized and all that. Mm -hmm. And that uh, we had this, you know, it moved on to throughout the year and somewhere along the line, kind of it's, you know, we had some stability. Okay. Then I, around 2018, mm -hmm. if you remember, mm -hmm. uh, we had a surge in right. crimes mm -hmm. where we, we had, you know, the Lebanese and, mm -hmm. you know, the Royal Motors, mm -hmm. you know, robberies, you remember, right. around this time, right. 2018. And IGPRP2 says we will be safe. So he said, he said we were going to be safe. Right. And uh, fast forward, I think uh, we, it's difficult to say uh, there has been that drastic changes when it comes to the security uh, of the state. We mm -hmm. still have a lot of unresolved murders right. and the list keeps increasing, mm -hmm. you know, every day you have, maybe, I wouldn't say every day, okay. every now and then you hear someone is murdered and that person unfortunately gets to be added to the mm -hmm. cold case files and once we might have some serial killers on the loose, okay. but the truth is that investment into the sector has been needed, mm -hmm. where when the people agitate a bit, then you see the executive, okay. I mean, try to do some show of, mm. we are going to do this, we are going to do that. And you remember the case of the two police officers who were shot in Kaswa. Uh, in Kaswa. Right. Almost immediately, quickly, we were told MTTD officers were going to be wielding AK-47s. Mm -hmm. And some of us said that wasn't going to work. Body cam. You all. know, body cams. We, some 200 or so body cams mm -hmm. came and there was a lot of noise about it. Mm -hmm. And have you seen a police officer with a body camera? I haven't no. seen it. No. And so it tells you that we don't have a strategic plan. Mm -hmm. And most recently, you did hear the minister of uh, the national security minister okay. when he was asked about the, the national security policy, which some of us have been, asking you know, for. Mm -hmm. asking for. He said it wasn't ready, mm -hmm. but it was going to be ready in. December or is in November. Right. So it tells you that the security of this country probably is in shambles. What, what would be your scorecard for the security situation? I mean, the security situation, I would score the the executive 47. 47? Okay. 47, yes. Adib, come in for me at this point. There's a lot of investments that have been made mm -hmm. regarding cars and ammunition, and you've seen them. Uh, they've been given out there. Is that is that enough to say that our state of security is better? Well, first of all, um, let me say good morning to my senior colleague, um, Adam Buna. Um, um, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it should go beyond just the procurement of um, these uh, cars and uh, other logistics. Mm. Indeed, it goes without saying that it is very important because for years on end, mm. uh, we have been crying about the fact that the police is ill-equipped. Indeed, mm. when the president came to power, one of his first 
appointment was the national security minister, which by then was indicative of the level of seriousness he attaches to security. Mm -hmm. And so I was not particularly surprised that a number of procurements has been made with respect to vehicles and other items. Right. Um, however, it goes way beyond that. I think for years on end, mm -hmm. the security situation is worsening by the day, according to uh, crime statistics uh, published by the Ghana Police But we, we keep getting assurances. We keep getting assurances that things are getting better. We need to be safe. We are safe. But, but, but like my senior colleague has stated, we lack a strategy, okay? Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we have put the necessary mechanisms in place to ensure that Ghanaians are safer. Okay. Um, our failure for a very long time now to digitalize crime and investigation in Ghana is something that has been of utmost worry to me. Because a lot of criminals have had the tendency to be motivated to commit crime because when you commit a crime in Ghana, according to a 2014 report I chanced on, there's the 90% likelihood that you'll be left off the hook, okay? So I think it should go beyond just assurances, but rather put the right strategies in place. Adib, which Adib, you may have to check your phone. It's on the table. Uh, it's giving us some feedback here. Okay. 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 Great. Thank you very much. So, so, so you're saying you've seen a 2014 report? Yes, that states that it is highly likely that when you commit a crime, there's 90% likelihood you'll be left off the hook. And okay. so criminals have had a tendency to believe in mm. Ghana, crime and investigation is not robust enough. Okay. So when you commit a crime, mm. there's the likelihood you will not be arrested. It, okay. it is called in criminology rational choice theory. Mm. It's based on a simple th uh, 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 conception that... The more you feel it is risky to commit a crime, the okay. less you are to commit that crime. And you saying that when it you... is it's been made easier, the criminals have been emboldened to commit crimes. Is that what you're saying? Uh, absolutely. To the extent that they've gone beyond committing crime at night, it's done in broad daylight. Police officers are shot in broad daylight. So what it means is they have been emboldened by, 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 the, by, 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 by the years. And, okay. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Bonas scores the, the government 47% on the criminal score, uh, the security score sheet. What will be your score sheet for the government? I'll score them 52%. 52%? Um, a lot of, exactly. Okay. Hold on for me a bit. This, this is a good combination for Dewa, by the way. <laughs> Let, let's come back to you, Mr. Mr. Bonas. So, the, the conversation, I'd like to pick up from where uh, Adib has left off. Chief Inspector Ashilevi was murdered in cold blood at the Kwabenya police station. The guys went in there, brought out their own who were in custody and shot the police officer. A promise was made about CCTV cameras that were going to be put in every police station. Up until now, we don't have it. Should politicians still be the ones in charge of our security architecture? We have a minister for interior, minister for defense, Minister for National Security, Minister of State and National Security, they have deputy ministers, and yet we continue to have these things. And the point has been emphatically made that if the politicians continue to be the ones in charge, dictating and appointing, the vice president is chairman of the police council, we will go nowhere. We'll just be talking. It what is do true. You say? It is true. And uh, well, let me recount some of the things. Okay. For instance, if you, since the, the inception of this particular mm -hmm. government, we, some of the achievements okay. which I noted includes recruitment into the police service, about right. 4,000, which right. has never happened before. Mm. We've had a 1,000 fire service officers, mm. you know, at various stages of uh, completing. Some of, some of them already passed out. Mm. We have prisons, another 1,000. Some vehicles, which my uh, good friend and brother Adib did mm. allude to, promotions, They've done some promotions across board. Mm -hmm. And then also uh, increments, you know, with regards to the mm -hmm. age limits, you know, mm -hmm. for other ranks of the military, it was 50. Right. And now uh, in the MPP's manifesto, it did say mm -hmm. that when they come into power, they would increase it to 55. Right. And that has been implemented. It has been. Okay. It has been mm -hmm. implemented as far as I'm concerned. And then uh, that of Yana, right. you know, before yeah. the, mm. uh, this particular government took place, I mean, from Kufo's time up to now, every other successive government mm. put in a bit and then Nanado crowned it. But then if you come to some of the things that 
were promised but not achieved. Okay. You want before to talk about... You, before you go there, let's talk about the recruitment of 4,000 for police, for example. Yeah. The concern on the streets is that a lot of party boys and girls are getting in there, not with the requisite qualification, not with the proper formation, and they are the ones supposed to be handling our security. Is there any truth to it? Should you be worried? Oh, that, it is true. I mean, you and I know. I mean, <laughs> you and I know that even the acquisition of passports, I mean, even acquisition of something as easy as the national ID mm. card, people haven't gotten them because they don't know anybody. Mm. And so it is true. I mean, uh, the, the evidence is there. It's not everything right. we can put out there. And it is worrying. Mm. And so today, you have a party food soldiers mm. who found their way into what do you call it uh, some of the services mm. and they tend not to respect their superiors okay. and so you are let's say a district commander right. of police right. or fire service mm. and you have an mp or a minister or some party mm. constituency chairman's mm. uh, nephew or niece who has been recruited, posted to that constituency or that district mm. and that boy or girl doesn't respect you but that's not normal if, if you're a superior, say a DSP or a superintendent, other ranks must succumb to you. I am command. telling you that there is that, you know, a unscripted fear mm. where senior officers somehow become so fearful of some junior officers because you have MPP police officers, NDC uh, perceived N NDC police officers mm. or security That's agents. Dangerous. I mean, I mean that is that is true. I mean, and so it is dangerous, but that is a reality, and that for me mm. is worrying. And just like you did ask your questions, going back to your question, professionalism versus it, government government influence. It does away with professionalism because there is that heavy influence when it comes to uh, you know government involvement in policing you know mm. how appear to was literally sad right. usually they have to pull you out mm. i mean you mm. know mm. he wasn't pulled out in the morning he was drive, driving gp1 right and then he was called to jubilee house of last mm. house mm. and then by 12 uh, you know 12 noon 12 that noon. day he was driving in a civilian vehicle right. he was gone he was gone oh yeah he was gone he only had a thanksgiving in, in, i mean that was it even that one i'm sure it was probably done by his own you know he did it by himself yeah. and so for me that does not speak well to how we probably would want to see our policing mm. and probably security okay. in the next probably couple of years okay. we'll come but, back to talk about some of the achievements let me yes. go back to adib adib tell me what would be your own version of the conversation of professionalism versus influence by government officials and by this i'm saying that we have all the experts uh, Interior Minister, we have uh, National Security Coordinator, well, National Security me. Minister. Tell me, what do you see? Hello, Adib. Well, there's, there seems well, to be... Well, um, it, it's unfortunately across the political divide. Um, hello, can you hear me? Yes, you're loud. You're loud and clear. Talk to me. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Adib. I can read you. Okay. All right. Uh, like I indicated, it cuts across the political divide. I mean, this is something that did not with um, the two major political parties mm -hmm. in Ghana. Indeed, NDC does it, MPP does it. And um, I remember some time ago, we had a number of uh, recruits who were being trained at the police academy. Um, after going through a number of training protocols, including uh, uh, drills, mm -hmm. um, they later found out that the certificates they used to get through is fake. So if we cannot conduct um, an authentication, you know, from their alma mater as to the uh, uh, validity of their certificate, how mm -hmm. much more background checks can we do? Because we've constricted it all to party foot soldierism right. to the extent that People go to the police headquarters, they go to party offices with their mm. party ID cards mm. for recruitment into the security agencies. Mm. And my senior colleague Adam Mona couldn't have said it better. We have instances where senior officers are undermined by junior officers because they feel they have political clout. And considering the convoluted nature of security appointees, mm. some of them without any proper security background mm -hmm. being appointed by the president, um, it makes it extremely difficult for the core security actors, like mm -hmm. it happened at Ayawasi West War mm -hmm. with a government appointee 
um, instructing an, an operation without the divisional police or, uh, commander within that enclave not knowing, without even the IGP knowing. So this uh, creates a little bit of you know a hard time for the core security actors who sometimes feel undermined and are able to do their work. Come to think of it also, right. we, there are instances where these appointees mm. are able to uh, uh, go ahead with certain major operational initiatives okay. without others who should be the new no win. Right. So this creates a bit of problem and I think going forward we would have to make a conscious, deliberate attempt to detach politics from policing in Ghana. Right. Hold on for me. Let's let's talk about the achievements quickly, and then we'll talk about what you want to hear tomorrow from the president, well, the, uh, yeah. based on what we have experienced, what we know. I've mentioned some of the achieve achievements, mm. but some of the things that the president consistently, ha I mean, some of them he's raised in his own nation of the uh, state, state of, of the nation. nation's address. One of them, 2018, mm. when we had uh, the surge in crime, right. he came out without probably uh, referring to his Minister of Finance and without reference to the budget, say 800 million Ghana cities, you remember, right, right. was going to be, you I know, given to the police. Mm -hmm. That 800 million up to today has not... Not a penny? Not a penny. Not a penny. They, we, there was a promise of choppers. I'm sure mm. you've heard right, about the right. helicopters. Right. And they were building hangars. Up mm. to today, 2020, mm. the choppers have still not landed. Okay. That's one of the things the vice president went around saying, we are going to install CCTVs right. at every police right. station. Mm. We haven't had a single CCTV installed. Mm. And so, and then the list goes on bulletproof jackets mm. for police officers. Police officers. We haven't seen them accommodation. Mm. I mean, <coughs> if you go to the police depot, 325 uh, apartments mm -hmm. being put up. Okay, the vice president was there to cut a sword for this. Okay. It has been suspended because the, vi the, the what's his name, the finance minister has not paid the contractors. Wow. And so, the, as we speak, that project is still, you know, hanging in and, there. And where the police sleeps is important. It's important. It, it, I mean, the police and immigration and all these people. And then you talk about welfare, mm. the welfare of the officers. I think somewhere this year, the welfare uh, charges or deductions, I think, has gone up mm. by 100 to 200 cities from 100. Okay. And there's been some agitation, especially amongst the officers, right. who think that shouldn't have been done. Mm. You talk about immigration. There is a law that has been passed okay. that immigration officers should be at our embassies right. okay, to issue visas. Okay. If you go to, if you land at JFK today, you are going to be met by immigration like Kotoka. Okay. If, you, if you go to the American embassy, you have immigration okay. officers who work there. Right. But if you go to our embassies, missions abroad, you have research, people from the research unit who are of foreigners who are issuing visas. So you mm -hmm. have different you know, uh, people doing different work. Okay. And so as far as mm. I'm concerned, it's something that I expect the president to, to probably talk about. Okay. And then you have, uh, what do you call it, uh, the murders, mm. unresolved murders. Mm. J.B. Dankwa, the lady at the port. Uh, uh, you know, the list goes mm. on. Mm. Even uh, the NPP zone uh, chairman. The chairman in the Ashanti who, region. No, the chairman in the Ashanti okay. region. There is another one in the northern region, uh, uh, Adam Mah or something. Uh, yes. Absolutely. Yes, who, who got acid, exactly. were told, poured on him. Mm. And then you have, you know, the gas redistribution. Right. Because you know the incident of a uh, atomic, mm. you mm. know, blast. Right. We, they went out there, you know, making noise mm. about it, mm. the politicians, mm. saying they were going to, we were going to have some, I don't know whether now, okay. you do, you, the they bring you I don't know the, whether you receive gas cylinders no, at home or I, you still I go don't. to buy. I don't. So I buy how myself. many years on, this has not been done and the risk is there. I mean... It at least goes on. You're talking about the sacking of IGP. I've mm -hmm. raised that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the police apartment. And would, then, you would, remember... Would you like the president to talk about Galamse? I would, I would mm -hmm. mention that. And then you also have insurance policy for the security officers. Okay. Up to today, it was, it was a promise mm -hmm. that they were going to do it. Up to today, it hasn't been spoken about. And then Galamse. I have raised it in several quarters mm -hmm. that, you know what, apart from the gold that we are told has been stolen mm. by the interministerial, whatever, vanguard it's or missing. whatever. It's missing, I'm sure it will it's, be found. It's missing. Mm. There are firearms that are also missing. A substantial number of firearms. Right. We have some figures, 20,000, some figures, 40,000. And these firearms, and so today, if five crimes are committed in Ghana, mm. four out of the five crimes are 
committed by the use of short arms and side arms. Right. Because of <coughs> gallancy. And so mine <coughs> is that we are getting to a, a we are getting to a stage where we are likely to have probably I don't want to say this and probably they will say I shouldn't have said it. Mm -hmm. We are running out of water. Don't say I wouldn't say mm -hmm. it, but what I'm trying to say is that your reporters have gone to where this water bodies. Right. When people begin to run short mm -hmm. of you know essential uh, you know commodities, commodities mm -hmm. what happens is that they begin to agitate, and this is a national security disaster that might be staring at us. Okay. I wouldn't want to probably I hear uh, you. say anything. For I hear you. Don't, don't, don't say more. Uh, let's say, I, I did you have the final word. What would you want to hear from the president tomorrow? Well, first of all, we would have to make an attempt to digitalize crime and investigation in Ghana. Mm. When you go to other jurisdictions like Western countries, they have a central database of DNA. Mm. of usually first-time offenders. That is thought. So right. anytime there's a crime mm -hmm. and someone leaves DNA, whether it is, it is sperm or strands of hair anywhere, they run it in the, in the DNA database and it helps them to a very large extent in, in catching criminals. Okay. Or we could also uh, integrate various systems like mm -hmm. the national identification currently ongoing, okay. uh, the national health insurance, mm. uh, the, the electoral commission, so we have a central biometric database also. So when a crime is co committed and the police go to the scene, they are able to cultivate some of these evidence that is usually run within the database. And it would help a lot in catching these criminals. Okay. And the recruitment is also extremely key because currently we have about 32, 33,000 police officers. I think it's not adequate enough mm. because... Uh, the police civilian ratio is one offset to about 900 Ghanaians, which is in contravention of the uh, five, U.S. standard. That is supposed to be one officer to about five officers. But right. we just don't need officers to stand in traffic and take monies from people. They okay. have to be well-resourced. They have to be well-trained. We would have to make an attempt Adib. to... Uh, Adib, thank you. Into them is thank you very much. And that's, that's Adib Sani. Adib Sani is with Jati K. He's a safety and security analyst as well. And I've been in studio with Mr. Adams Bona. He's a safety and security expert. Chief, thank you very much for your time. This is all time will allow us, sadly. Uh, but we'll continue the conversation, I'm sure, tomorrow when the president is done speaking.